In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this baseball hat out of cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cake since 2002. And on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. All right, now that we have that out of the way, I am making a hip hop cake this week. It's one of my mo mo more popular designs and she wanted a baseball cap on the top instead of the Kangol hat. And I wanna show you how I do that. And before we get started, I just wanna remind you guys that I did design my first free guide for you. It's a birthday cake design blueprint and it'll just help you come up with ideas to design your birthday cakes. I will link that in the description below. So let's get into the video. Right, now we're gonna make the brim. I am making an eagle's hat and she wanted a black eagle's hat. So I have black marshmallow fondant. I can link my video below on how I make this. And I also have another video on how I work with it to get it to a good consistency. So I will link both of those below. So I need enough on it to cover the cake that we're making and also to make the brim. So I'm gonna pull off a chunk. Why does chunk sound so gross? Chunk is a gross word, but about half of it. That should be good. Wrap this up and I'm gonna put this back in a plastic container and pop this in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds. All right, this is good. Now it's soft and pliable, and I am going to work with it a little bit. If you see, there is elephant skin, there's cracking. You can't just use this right away, okay? There's a little TLC that you need to do with it, which I explained in that one video. So I have some Crisco here. Just gonna get a little bit on the counter and on my hands and start to knead it together. Now, I'm gonna add some Tylos to the entire thing, and then I am going to add even more to the brim. So if you've seen any of my videos, you know I love using Tylos powder, CMC powder, it's the same thing, it's just a brand name. Um, this helps the fondant set really, it helps it set and hold its shape. If you don't use this in fondant, then your fondant can be super soft, it could be, you know, it, it's just, I like to use this in everything. So for something about this size, what is this, about a pound of fondant, I'm just sprinkling about a teaspoon on there, and I'm going to knead that together. So I'll put some more Crisco down and work that in. Now already this fondant is starting to look nice and smooth. So what I wanna do, I'm going to rip off just a little bit that I'm gonna need for the brim. And then wrap this up in plastic and put this in a plastic container, just setting this aside. Now, the brim is gonna to have to hold its shape, so I wanna add a little more Tylos powder to it. Probably another quarter of a teaspoon. And we'll work that all together. And now we will set this aside just for a few minutes to let the Tylo start to work and harden a little bit. Now, this is the part that is gonna, might get a little confusing. This is how I do it. All I know is to show how I do it and maybe you can learn something from it and uh, be able to figure out how to do this on your own as well. This hat <laughs> I got a, a long time ago. It just has cornstarch all over it. This is a children's size hat which is about the size of the cake that we're making, okay? So I want to make a fondant brim the size of this brim. I have a piece of plastic that I taped on here so it won't come off so it protects the brim. Um, so what I did, and I have used this piece of paper for years. I'll just show for a quick example. I got a piece of paper and I put the hat down on top of it. Press all the way down so the brim is flat Take a pen and basically trace the outer part and then you could see it curves in here a little bit. So what you wanna do, lift the hat and then just try to trace a rough trace on the inside. 
okay? This looks horrible and you know, it just gives you an idea of how this needs to be cut. Just cut this out using the lines you used as a rough guide. And I don't know how to explain how to do this if you don't have a kid size hat. You may just have to buy one. That's what I did. I just bought this kid size hat. So now, this is going to be too big. All right, we're going to have to trim it down. So I'm going to put it back on top of the hat. And I see that it just needs to come in a little more here. <laughs> so in the front, measure it up with the front, and then I'm just gonna take my finger and crease where it meets the hat. This is all so rough and it's gonna look so ugly, and I can't believe that I'm showing you that I do it this way, but this is just the way that I do it, just to figure <laughs> it out, and I hope it makes sense. Actually, that, that fits pretty good. And look, it's almost the same exact size as this piece of paper that I've been using forever. So now you have the basic shape of the brim that you're going to use. The Tylos has started working. This is really holding its shape. Now today is Monday. This cake is for Saturday. You want to make this brim days in advance. It needs time to dry. You want it to dry really hard so it'll hold its shape when it goes on the cake. Now I'm going to knead this and then roll it out, but I want to roll it out about a quarter of an inch thick. Not too thin, but not too thick. I have cornstarch here. This is not powdered sugar. Some people ask me if it's powdered sugar. Powdered sugar will be, get really sticky. So I like to use cornstarch. And just roll this out and make sure that this will fit on top of it so you can cut. So I'm going to want to run it, uh, roll it long and a little wide. Then what you do, take this and put it on top and make sure that it fits and it just fits and this is perfect. So you can see how thick this is. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. All right, now to do this, I have a regular pizza cutter. I have um, a small circle cutter and a stitcher and I can find these, these and link these below. I'm sure you know where to get a pizza cutter from. I'm going to wet a paper towel. That way I can just keep wiping things off. If the fondant starts to stick to my tools, I like to always wipe the fondant off. Now I like to do this on a turntable. I find it so much easier to do this on a turntable because you can turn it as you're cutting. You'll see what I mean. Now this is going to get a little confusing, but this dip that we made here, I have found that it creates a gap between the brim and the cake. So what I'm gonna do is just draw a line kind of a little more across and filling in this little gap down here. I have a needle tool or you can use a toothpick or something. Let's make sure this is completely on the fondant and just trace the bottom part up the sides. And now you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna draw a line. I'm not gonna come all the way down because I don't want a big gap in between the brim and my cake. Just trust me, it's better to cut it bigger and then maybe trim it if you need to. So I am coming a little bit higher. All right, I don't know how else to explain to you how to get this shape except by doing it this way, by cutting it too small and then drawing it a little bigger. I'm sorry if this is confusing, but this is how I do it. So now, I don't know if you can see, but there is stitching going around this whole brim. There's two lines of stitching. I think I do either two or three. So this is why I like the turntable. I'm going to use the stitching wheel and you have to get down and look at it and make sure that you are doing this evenly spaced around the whole thing. So I want to come in about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to start to roll the wheel. And look, I'm turning the turntable with my bottom hand and I'm trying to keep an even border the whole way around from that line that I drew. This is why you need a turntable to do this. And 
then go up. All right, and now I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do two more stitch lines. So same thing, just make sure you have your next lines the same distance away from the other one and do that two more times. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take my pizza cutter and just cut the outer lines that I drew with the needle tool. Perfect, and whenever I cut anything out of fondant, I just always take my fingers and um, run it along the edges, just because when you cut things out of fondant, it just gets jagged a little bit. All right, now we have this brim. I actually wanna do one more row of the stitching. I think it might look better. I'm gonna take my hat that has the plastic covering the brim and put this on top. And now I wanna let this dry. So what I did, I feel like this is a little too um, high, so I'm just going to trim it again. And I know this is horrible, but the only way I know how to explain this is that I've done this so many times and I can kind of tell. And I know that's horrible for a, a tutorial, but um, it's better to have this a little longer. Now you can always push it into the cake. Now with this, I curved the brim a little bit so it would hold a curved shape. And I'm going to set this on top just like this. And now I'm setting this aside for probably, I don't know, it's Monday. So probably until Thursday or Friday, I want to make sure that this is super hard. When I take this off, this is going to hold its shape. It's not going to need a hat. It'll just sit with a curve. So make this a couple days in advance. And next let's move on to the cake. I'm just going to let this sit out Room temperature, not in the refrigerator. Just let it sit out. Don't cover it with anything. Leave it exposed to air and let it dry out. All right, forgive me for having all this other stuff in the way, but I'm making a lot of cakes today and I just wanted to film this. So to make the, the head of the hat, I have this half of a sports ball pan from Wilton. I can find this and link this below. This is a six inch diameter. And what I did, I took some of my pan grease. I have a video on how I make this pan grease. I can link it below. And I have a pastry brush and I just brushed, lightly coated the pan grease on here. And what I like to do, I also have a flour nail. I can find these and link these below. I like to take a flour nail and put it in the center of all the cakes that I bake. What the flour nail will do, it will help the cake rise evenly. So the sides of the pan are gonna bake the outside of the cake and the nail will bake it from the center. Now I have some chocolate, chocolate chip cake batter and I'm gonna fill this three quarters of the way full and I am right handed and I have to do this so I don't wanna block <laughs> the camera. So that's good, this is three quarters of the way full. I can link my recipe for my chocolate cake and all I did was add some chocolate chips in there. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes and check on it and see if it's done. And I also forgot to mention, you also need a six inch round cake in the same flavor as the half sports ball pan. So putting this in the oven for 40 minutes at 3.50 and then I'm gonna check on it. All right, this was in the oven for about 52 minutes and I did the toothpick test, it came out clean and I took it out. I forgot to mention that this comes with a little ring so you can set it on the ring when it goes in the oven, that way it's not gonna like spill over. So I always set it on that ring. And this has been sitting out for about five minutes and now I am ready to wrap it up and freeze it. So here I have an 18 inch long roll of food safe plastic and I'm just gonna take this and tap it on the sides to help release it. The pan grease helps release it and then just put it upside down and remove the pan. And take the nail out of the center, wrap it up nicely.
And now I'm going to set this in the freezer overnight until I'm ready to fill it. As you can see, I have a freezer that is just dedicated to my cakes. And I just have a shelf in here. I like to put cake box lids on top of the shelves. I don't know why, I just do it. Because um, when I cut, when I use cake boxes, I just cut the lids off and I save the lids. So I'm just putting the cake in the freezer overnight. If you want to freeze it for longer, you can freeze these cakes for a few months, but you want to make sure that you wrap them really well. So if you're gonna freeze them longer than a few days, double or triple wrap them in the plastic wrap. Freezing the cakes is going to help to trap in the moisture and the cakes are gonna be so moist. All right, this baked for about 50 minutes at 350 and now I'm ready to wrap it up in plastic wrap and place it in the freezer. All right, so these cakes were in the freezer overnight. And what I did, I took them out of the freezer about four hours ago and just left them out wrapped up. Just leave them on the countertop wrap, wrapped up. Don't unwrap the plastic and let it thaw. And now it has completely thawed and come to room temperature and we're ready to fill the cake. So if you remember, this is a six inch cake and this half sports ball pan is a six inch pan. So what I'm going to do is put it on a six inch circle. So right here I have a grease proof six inch circle. I can find these and link these below. And I just have a regular 10 inch uh, cake board cake circle. I'm going to duct tape the six inch circle to the 10 inch circle so it doesn't move around. Just rolling it up into a little donut, if you will. Place it down and then just put the circle on top and press down. Now this is for a hip hop cake. So what I wanna do is write hip hop on the edge. That way I know what cake it's for. I always label my boards because I'm always working on so many cakes at once and I need to know which cake is which. So setting that aside while we trim these before we fill them. So I like to use gloves and just unwrap both cakes Make sure your countertop is clean. I wiped everything down. And I like to save the plastic so I can rewrap the cake once it's filled. The reason I like to do a six inch cake in addition to this is this is too short. If you put a brim on this hat right here, it's gonna be really short. You need, you need to have a little lift here. So that's what this one is for. So what we have to do is trim this. I've been using these trimmers for 20 years. <laughs> this is a basic one from Wilton. It has little notches here and you could just put it on whatever notch that you want. And then I'm just gonna saw back and forth. Good. Now, I have this left over. What you could do with this, you can make cake pops. You can save this and freeze it. Uh, you can give it to the birds or make your neighbors happy and give it to the neighbors. So I'm gonna set this aside. Now, I have this turntable here. I always put a piece of non-skid pad on top of the turntable, which helps prevent the, the cake board from sliding around. So once you put this on top, it's not gonna move. I have some melted candy melts here. I just got regular candy melts from the craft store popped it in the microwave until they were melted. And when I have cakes that are under, that are six inches and under, I always adhere them to the, this little circle with some melted chocolate. It really prevents it from sliding around when you're filling and icing it. So just spread a little bit of that onto the board. And now I'm gonna take some simple syrup. The simple syrup is a solution. It's one-to-one -one solution of sugar and water. So what you want to do, if you do one cup of sugar, you do one cup of water. If you do two cups of sugar, you do two cups of water. Add both of them to a pot, bring it to a boil, and then just turn it off. Let it cool, and then you can put it in a little squirt bottle like this. The simple syrup is going to help keep the cakes a little moist. And I'm just going to spray lightly a couple times and place this on top of the cake circle. Now, I'm spinning it around and making sure that it's even the whole way around. I don't want it sticking off one side and hanging over the other, right? So just trying to make sure that it's as even as possible. And now before I fill this, I want the chocolate to set. 
so the cake won't move around when I'm filling it. So setting this aside, and then for this, what I want to do is trim the bottom off. I'm going to put this all the way on the lowest setting. And this looks perfect. So it's on the very bottom notch on here. And I'm just going to saw back and forth. Setting this aside for the birds, the neighbors, or some cake pops. Just want to set this on the plastic until I'm ready to use it. Now I'm filling this, she wanted chocolate buttercream to fill it with. So I have my chocolate buttercream here. I have a video on how I make this filling and I will link that below. So the chocolate has set and the cake is not gonna move around on the little circle as I'm filling it. And just taking a little dollop and putting that in the center, that's probably a little too much. So I will just remove some of it after I spread it around. So I'm pushing it all the way to the edge I'm letting it go over the edge and we'll seal that seam with the extra buttercream. Taking any extra and just wiping it back into the bowl. Now I'm going to put the top on. So what I'm going to do is take my simple syrup and spray the underneath and the top just a couple times. Nice. And place this on top. Make sure that it's perfectly set on the top and it's not sticking off over the side, right? And then I'm just gonna take my spatula and seal this little seam here, the extra buttercream. Taking any excess and wiping it off on the bowl. Perfect, and now I'm gonna take the piece of plastic and wrap it up. Make sure there's no cake sticking out. So if you wrap it and there's some of the cake that's exposed, that's not good. You want it completely wrapped up. See, right here, there's some sticking out. So you need to turn it and make sure that there's no cake exposed to the air. And that looks good. Setting this aside at room temperature. I'm not gonna refrigerate it. So just, I'm gonna leave it out on the countertop. Usually leave it out overnight so the cake has time to settle. So I will ice this and cover it tomorrow. All right, this has been sitting overnight. It's settled and now I'm ready to do, to ice it. So I just wanna take off the plastic wrap. This was sitting out at room temperature. I did not refrigerate it. Now, you need to have clean hands for this process because you have to use your hands to smooth it. So what I want to do, I have my American buttercream here. I have um, a video on how I make this. I can link this below. I only use American buttercream. I don't know what to recommend if you want to use a meringue buttercream. I've never worked with that before. Um, so I don't know how that will work underneath this, but. So I'm just going to take a spatula and spread this on starting at the bottom. And I just want to push it on and make sure it's completely adhered to the cake. So you don't want to just take a big glob of it and slop it on and move it around. You've got to kind of, you want to make sure you don't get any air bubbles underneath. So I'm pushing it down as I'm smoothing it. Okay. Just making sure that it's completely adhered to the cake and doing this the whole way around. So I'm doing about a quarter of an inch thick uh, layer of icing. Right, now I want to start to smooth this out so to make sure that the bottoms the bottom of this is uh, even I'm going to use a bench scraper I have to dip in and dip it in hot water so I have a boiling pot of water but it's not in frame and I don't feel like going over there to do that so I'm going to run this under hot water just to get the metal wet wipe it off and then I'm holding it in on an angle a little bit because it does go up on an angle and I'm just starting to smooth it out. Wipe the excess off and repeat the process till I go around the bottom. And now 
now this is why you need very clean hands. I'm going to use my hands to round the top with the border. All right, so this is why I like to do it over the sink. I'm gonna kind of tilt this in so it doesn't, so this, <laughs> this is sitting on the non-skid pad on the turntable so it's not gonna slide off. As I'm tilting it, I'm having my, I have my thumb on this piece of cardboard and I'm gonna tilt it in so the water can run down. So I'm gonna dip my hand in the warm water, drip some of it on here and use the water to smooth it out. Rinse off the extra icing and keep doing the same process. Now, you have to start to spin this. I ha always have my fingers on the cardboard to make sure it does not fall into the sink. That's very important. And I'm using a light touch. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to distort the icing. I'm just really using my hands and the water to smooth it out. And that looks pretty good. Now I just want to refine the bottom with my spatula. Again, I have a pot of boiling water that I would normally dip everything in, but I just don't feel like, <laughs> I don't have the time right now to keep go over there and film it doing that. So there's little parts at the bottom here that are not perfect. So I'm just gonna take my spatula, keep it wet, and just refine that. So I'm holding the spatula on a slight angle. And I'm using my other hand to turn the turntable. Just making sure that it's nice and pretty. Good. And now this is going to go in the refrigerator probably overnight until I'm ready to put on the fondant and the brim. All right, today's Friday. This has dried really hard. You can see it's holding its shape. I don't want to break it, but I just want to show you that it is holding its shape and has just been sitting out for a couple days. Now I'm pop this mic. I pop this fondant in the microwave to get it pliable. And now we're going to cover the cake. Now I have a little turntable here with a piece of non-skid pad on it. The non-skid pad helps prevent the cake from sliding around when you put it on top. This cake is just out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid, right? It's gonna, it's gonna hold its shape while I'm working with it. So this is what you want. I have some piping gel here and I'm gonna take piping gel on a paintbrush and completely cover with a very thin coat the whole thing with piping gel. Make sure you coat all the way down to the bottom edges so the fondant sticks to the bottom. Now I'm gonna roll this out about a quarter of an inch thick, probably a little thinner than that, and cover this. Again, using cornstarch so it doesn't stick to the counter. As I roll it out, I'm gonna keep lifting it and turning it to make sure that it's not sticking to the countertop. Now just lifting this up and covering the cake. And covering something, I wanna make sure that there's no cornstarch on my hands or arms because it transfers onto the black fondant really easily. But covering a cake like this is super easy because it's in the perfect shape for the fondant to fall easily. So I'm pulling it out on the sides to remove any wrinkles and then smoothing it down with my clean hands. My hands are clean. Pull it out when you see a wrinkle and then smooth it down. Do that the whole way around. Make sure it's sealed at the bottom. So I just take my pinky finger and press it along the bottom. Good, now I'm taking my pizza cutter and getting as like pretty close to the bottom. Don't cut too far in because if you cut too far in, the fondant can shrink up and you might be able to see the cake underneath. 
So I don't know how to explain this. Let's get rid of the excess first. Now to remove the excess, I gotta come in this way because I'm right-handed. I'm kind of holding it straight up and down and just like getting it almost touching the cake. It's better to cut it a little bigger at first and then go back and refine it if you need to. All right, and that's perfect. It meets exactly down where the cake board is. You take a piece of fondant, bunch it up in your fingers. I dip a little bit of cornstarch on my fingers so it doesn't stick and use the fondant to smooth out the fondant. It's a lot easier to do it with a piece of fondant like this than to use a flat fondant smoother. To do this part, to add the details, you're gonna need a Dresden tool or some kind of tool that kind of comes to a point. You could even use a, a toothpick, you know, to get the lines in here. And our stitching wheel again. We have to measure the circumference around the bottom here. Now, I hope this doesn't get confusing. This is just the way that I do it. I don't know if it's weird, but I will just show you how I do it. So I have a soft tape measure here. Wrap it around the bottom. See, what I wanna do first is find the front of the cake, which part looks most symmetrical. So you can see that this side slopes down a little more than this side. So I wanna look at it from the front and make sure when I'm looking at it, both sides look symmetrical. So this is gonna be the front of my cake. Wrapping this around and where it comes to meet is 21.25 inches. So there are going to be six lines, six uh, sectioning it off. So I have a calculator here, 21.25. I'm just covering up uh, someone's name and number here. That's why my thumb is there. Divided by six. So every th basically three and a half inches, I'm going to make a little notch. So finding the front of my cake, and this is where I want, want it to meet. And every three and a half inches. So we're starting at one, and I say one is because we're at zero, because this is where zero is. It's just overlapping here and you can't see it. So then I'm going to go three and a half inches and make a, a little line. Three and a half plus three and a half is seven. I go to seven and I make another little line. 10 and a half is adding another three and a half to that. And I make another line and I'm pushing this against it to make sure that this is flat. So 10 and a half to 14, make another line. And I'm just 14 to 17 and a half. And that is good. All right. So now we want to get the lines in here. Where's the front? This is the front. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect this line here, go over the top and connect it to this line in the back. All right. So this is where you got to get a little, <laughs> you got to get down in front of the cake, looking at the cake, Wait, this is, which is the front. The front is right here. All right, so get down in front of the cake and I'm just holding this straight up and down or you could do it with a toothpick and lift it up straight, 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 straight and go to a point in the middle where it meets, turn it around and then continue the line and meet it with this little notch that you made down here. Maybe a little off, that's okay. Okay. And do the same thing for the other two lines. So I'm gonna start at the notch, go up to the middle and try to meet it exactly in the middle, holding it straight. If you hold it on an angle, it's not gonna work. You have to make sure, get in line with the cake, make sure it is straight up and down. It's gonna meet in the middle. We're gonna put something here and cover the middle point. Turn it around, come to the back and continue the line down to meet this other notch. Okay, and it's a little off, but that's okay. 
And same thing for the last one. All right, I hope that wasn't confusing. <laughs> it's, it's a little tricky with these sometimes. There's no template or anything. You just have to use your eye and try to get it as even looking as you can. So now I'm just going to refine this. I'm using the curved part of this. Um, I can link these Dresden tools below. It's just so easy. I've been using these forever. So I'm using the curved part. You can see I kind of have this part set on the cake and I just want to define these lines a little better. So using the lines I made as a guide and I'm just pressing a little harder to deepen the lines. Now, don't press too hard. You're gonna poke a hole in the fondant. So just starting at the middle, using the curve and going down. If you don't have a Dresden tool for this, you're gonna have to find something that doesn't have a sharp edge. So if you use a toothpick for this, you could easily poke a hole into the fondant and you don't want that. All right, now I wanna do the stitching. Again, I'm getting low. Now I'm gonna do a stitching along both sides of all of the lines. All right, so you have to get low and make sure like we did on the brim, make sure that you have an even border the whole way around. So I'm going like a 16th of an inch on the outside using that line as a guide. Go all the way up to the middle. Just making sure that this little stitch is the same distance on the outside of the line the whole way down. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back on the other side. Come up the side. And then do that for all of them. Good, now we have all the stitching. Now I have the brim back, it's just a little off camera. Find the front of the cake. Now this part may, not, may be weird to you. I know I always say that, but I'm, I'm self-conscious because I do things weird and people may be like, what the heck are you doing that for? But this is how I do it. Take this off, put it against the cake, okay? Now we see where this is going to have to match. I want to make sure that it's centered so this line is coming down and meeting in the middle. And what I'm going to do is just push this in very slightly. <laughs> you got to do it very slightly so you're not going to mess up the brim or push the cake too hard. Okay. Now, pull that away and you can see a line has formed in here. Put this back on the hat. Now, I want to create a space where this brim can sit into the hat. So I'm taking the flat side of this Dresden tool, taking the flat side, and where that line is, I'm pushing in just underneath the line. Okay, so I'm creating a space for that brim to fit into the hat. So that line that was created by pushing the brim in serves as your guide so you know to push the fondant in underneath that line. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's gonna be covered by the brim. Now I can pick up the brim again, put it against the cake and push in and it's going to hold it. It's gonna set into the hat, right? So there's not gonna be a seam there. So it, it just, it sits much better when you just push it in a little bit. Look, now I can pull it out, right? So it has this space right here so the brim can sit in it. You can even make it a little deeper. Just try not to uh, poke. So you can see the fondant is coming away, but that's okay. Try not to poke anything above that line. Good, I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator for about a half hour. Um, I want the fondant to not be so tacky. It's a little tacky down here because it's a little warm. So I want to get rid of the tackiness and then I'm going to transfer this on the cake and finish it. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna roll out fondant 
so I can make this little nub. Is that what it's called? A nubbin, like Chandler. And I know I always say that, but we're gonna do this little nubbin. And usually there's little circles around here on adult hats as well. So we're gonna do that. I have an Atiko number 808 round tip. And I also have a number, I think this is 12 and a number six, okay? I will link everything that I use below. For the nub on the top, we're gonna want to roll out the fondant a little thicker. So you can see that's about a quarter of an inch thick. And then for the other little nubbins, <laughs> we will roll them out, roll it out thinner. And you can see this is like a lot thinner than this one. So taking the 808 cutter or whatever size tip that you have and cutting that, smoothing the sides, and this will be great because it'll cover our dowel, the mark that the dowel makes. And for the holes, I need to make six because we have six sections. I find it easier to cut the small hole first and then cut the bigger one around it. So cut six small holes, spacing it out so we can get the circles. You'll see what I mean. If you do them all close together, you won't be able to get good circles. Before you cut it out, I just like to um, take a tool and just smooth the inside of the circles you just cut. This is a little OCD of me. Um, you can skip this step if you want. And now I'm gonna get on top of here so I can make sure that this is centered. So I'm gonna have to lift this up to show you. I'm gonna look down the tip and make sure that there is a perfect border around that open circle. You don't want it too far to one side. You need to get a perfect border. So get on top of it, find your perfect border, press down and cut it out. I find that it's easier to cut the smaller circles first. And here we have a circle. So much easier when you have a little cutting board that you can set everything aside on and do the same thing for the other five. And then just setting these aside and then I will get the cake out of the refrigerator and stack it. All right, now I wanna stack the hat on top. If you're putting the hat as the top of the cake, you need to know how to do this. If you're just leaving it on a cake board, then you could skip this step. Now, this is a seven inch cake and the hat is six inches. So I'm gonna want the hat to be lined up towards the back of this cake and I kind of want it on a little bit of an angle. So I have a sewing ruler here and I, I can link my video on how I stack cakes. It goes into it very detailed, but just to show you, I'm getting low with the cake, finding the highest point where the cake is gonna be, put the sewing ruler down and then push this down to the top of the cake. Pull it out, don't move that little blue nub and now we're gonna cut our straws. I have bubble tea straws here. These I can link below. They're so much easier to, to stack rather than using plastic dowels. Um, I'm gonna use, since the top cake is six inches, I'm gonna use six straws. So I have a Sharpie marker. I'm gonna get low, put one end against the blue part, and then where it just comes off of the ruler, I'm gonna mark with the Sharpie marker, and then I'm gonna cut the marker and the rest of the straw off. So there's not gonna be any marker in the cake. We're cutting that part off. So you have to make sure you go past the ruler and not at the very end, because you wanna be able to cut the marker off. Did I say that enough times? <laughs> and now, just taking the scissors right below where that marker is, cutting that off and throwing this end away. Do that for all of them. I'm gonna do it off camera, it's a lot easier. Now I wanna stack these. Now, since I've been doing this for so long, I know where to put the straws. If you don't, you can get a six, I'm just using this bowl as an example, but you can get a six inch cake circle and put it down and see where you're gonna want your straws to be and make a little mark. However, I could just do it by looking at it. And you wanna make sure those straws go all the way, almost to the end of where the cake board is going to be, but not all the way. My hands are clean, do I need to say that? I always wash my hands, I wash my hands before I started this process. 
Now just cake is right out of the refrigerator. I have to work quick so it doesn't get tacky. You see the lines in this cardboard. So you're gonna have to pull the cardboard down according to where the lines bend, okay? You can't break it in half. You have to break it along one of these lines. Again, this is explained in the video where I show you how I stack my cakes. Hold the top, press down with my hand, and then I need to reach underneath and lift it up. Pull the tape off, and I'm gonna put this on top. Now, I want this lined up at the back of the cake. The brim is gonna hang off of the front, that is okay. So typically when I'm doing these hat cakes, since they're six inches, I like to put them on an eight inch cake. However, this one was seven inches, so I'm just gonna make it work. So it's gonna hang off a little bit in the back and that's okay. So I wanna have it on an angle so the brim is facing forward on an angle. So you can hold it here, see how it's gonna look. I like it like that. Actually, I wanna turn it a little more to the side. Perfect. I have a dowel that I sharpened with a pencil sharpener that is only used for dowels, never been used for pencils. I have a pair of snips here. And I'm gonna hold this straight up and down, bring it below where the top of the hat is, and then come straight out, and this is where I'm gonna cut. Now I wanna put this in the very center where all those points meet. That's where we're gonna put that thick little nubbin and push down and start to hammer that till this goes all the way down into the cake board. I always keep another little dowel here, hope my arm isn't in the way, to countersink it. And you can hear that it stops going down, you know you've hit the board. All right, now the next step is the chocolate that we're going to use. If you made a red hat, you're gonna to wanna to use red chocolate. If you made a blue hat, you're gonna to wanna to use blue chocolate. I'm just gonna use this dark chocolate. I don't have any black coloring, but it's okay. The chocolate is gonna go underneath and it's gonna hold the brim. So putting a little bit, I can link these. I love these meltables. I get these at Michael's. I haven't seen them on Amazon. If I can find them on Amazon, I'll link them. But any kind of um, chocolate discs that you can melt, you don't need too many of them. And I'm just gonna melt these in the microwave. We are also going to need a some kind of paintbrush. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna paint underneath the brim, attaching the brim to the cake with the chocolate so it's not gonna fall off. All right, chocolate is melted enough. And we want this adhere to adhere to the to the cake so it doesn't fall off. So what I'm gonna do is start by putting some of the chocolate underneath. Okay, you wanna make sure that it's underneath, it's not gonna seep out the top. And the brim is going to stick to this chocolate. And I'm pushing it into the cake. Do not break the brim. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna paint even more and you might not be able to see this. All right, this is kind of a weird angle, but you'll be able to see a little bit what I'm doing. Make sure you do not get any chocolate on this cake, and I'm just going to go up underneath, and I'm painting up. So I'm painting chocolate on the cake and on the brim, and it's going to seal it together. This is why it is important to have the same color chocolate as your cake, so you can't see it. You can see the brown a little bit, but it's not too bad. So I'm making sure that I'm getting chocolate where the seam is, where the brim meets the cake. You must have chocolate there because it's going to hold it together. All right, I just finished this and it didn't even record. I'm so mad, so I'm gonna explain it to you. I took all the, all the little pieces, the circles that we cut, I took the big one, got a little bit of water underneath, and then put it right in the center to cover the hole that was created by the dowel. For these little pieces, 
I just get a little teeny, teeny bit of water underneath it. You don't need a lot of water. Just get a little bit underneath so it sticks and put it in between the lines a little bit away from that center nubbin, if you will, and just do that equally spaced around the whole thing. And then I printed out all images. She wanted um, the old Eagles logo and the Super Bowl champs. Yeah, Super Bowl champs. <laughs> Um, on the hat. I have a video on how I print and use edible images. I can, I can link that below because if I put that in this video, it would be forever long. So I just, I just put a little bit of water on the back of them and attach that to the cake. Um, these are attached to fondant as well. And then I'm so mad that this part didn't show. Oh, so the brim, because it was mixed with a lot more Tylos and it sat out exposed to air, the brim and the little nubbin up here were a little bit of like a light gray color. So in order to get it to match, what I do, I have some shortening, I have some shortening here and a paintbrush. Get a little bit of shortening on the paintbrush and I painted this top part here so it, it matches the fondant on the hat a lot better. And then the same thing, I just painted the whole thing with a little bit of shortening, dipping it in, getting a little more, getting a little more shortening as needed and just doing this around the whole thing. I'm not putting a lot of pressure, um, just trying to get the brim to be the same color as the hat. And when I was done with that, just take a clean paper towel and lightly, I'm barely even putting any pressure on here. Just lightly remove any excess and just let it dry. The, the shortening will reabsorb into the fondant. And I'm so mad that that didn't film and I'm sorry about that, but luckily that was the easiest part of the whole thing. If you see that, if you're, if you're putting this on a cake and you see that um, it messed up the icing underneath, you just take a little palette knife and use light pressure and just push it back in. You know, and just look at it and see where things got a little messed up and just trying to fix it. But here is your adorable baseball hat made out of cake. So here you go. Here is the adorable cake hat, hat cake, whatever. I'm gonna put this down. <laughs> it's early and this is really heavy right now. <laughs> but this is one of my more popular designs that I do. Um, I've made it so many times. I actually do have videos on how I make the brick wall, how I make the graffiti name, how I print edible images and use them on there, how I make a fondant chain. I'm going to link everything below in case you want to learn how to do anything else that is on this cake. Now with the hat cakes, that pan, and I'm, I'm going to link everything below that I used as well, but that pan is a six inch round sports ball pan. So like I said, you really want to put it on an eight inch cake or bigger. You can put it on a seven inch cake like I did here. You just realize that it's, it's a very tight squeeze and it does hang off of the cake just a little bit, um, but it still does work. There have been times where people have asked me to make a hat that was not for a cake that was going to be this big. And I actually made the top part out of Rice Krispies and did the brim a little smaller. So it is kind of the same um, process. However, you can't push the brim into Rice Krispies, so it's a little trickier. I just like the way that it turns out so much better if it's with cake. Now, if you are not putting the hat on top of the cake, if you are just doing a hat by itself, then you just want to adhere the cake to a cake board rather than a circle and then transfer it onto a cake, obviously. But I would also dowel the hat the cake into the board so it wouldn't slide around. I'm not gonna really be able to link a, a kid's hat. You could probably, I mean, maybe I could find one and link one below, but you can, um, you could probably just find one at a local sporting store. Just make sure that that is a youth size um, and not an adult size, because an adult size brim won't really work. And I know, <laughs> I know my way of doing the brim is weird because I trace it and then I cut it smaller and then I, and then I make it bigger. It's like the weirdest thing. This is just how I do it. This is just how it works for me. I know it can be a little weird, but hopefully you got something out of this and will be able to do it when next time that you have to make a hat. 
So I think that is it for now. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will get back to you. You can follow me on social media. I am on Instagram and Facebook and I have my website. And I, I did my first TikTok the other day. <laughs> um, I made an M&M &M cake because I love M&M. &M and um, I made it for myself for my boyfriend's birthday. <laughs> but I'm also on TikTok, but I don't have it on there. I'm not too active on there yet. But anyway, that's enough about social media. I will link everything below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it and got something out of it. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.